hello and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about one book in particular that I read in 2023 and this book is the most disappointing book that I read all year. So this is a book that I had quite high expectations going into it and it just really did not meet any of those expectations or at least it really let me down <laughs> as a reader for what I thought this book was going to be. And it's a book that I thought had such a great premise and it just did not live up to what the premise sort of meant it could be. So that's why this is the most disappointing book for me personally. So a couple of disclaimers. This is all just my opinion. If you read this book and you loved it, just ignore everything that I say. This is just what I thought about it when I was reading it and my opinion has no impact on you and what you might think about this book. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But also I do think I make some legitimate points and I think this book, it could have been so much better. And I just wish it had been more of what I hoped it would be when I started reading it. I can understand how people would really enjoy this book, but I think it had I had so many issues with it and I felt the need <laughs> to sit down and make a video all about it. So I think that's all of my disclaimers that I needed to say. So I'm just going to dive straight in and start telling you about this book. So the book I'm going to be talking about in this video is When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. So I'm going to start off with what I actually did like about this book and sort of get that out of the way before I go into everything that frustrated me. So what I really did enjoy about this book, starting off with the writing. I, so this is when I say it wasn't the worst book of the year. It was a very well written book. The writing I thought was very engaging, very interesting. So the actual premise I love. I like the idea was great. So if you haven't heard of When Women Are Dragons, so it's set in the 1950s and it sort of talks about what would happen if women turned into dragons. So it does mention examples of women turning into dragons throughout history, but the main story begins in the 50s where the great dragoning happens, where lots of women across America, uh, particularly housewives, all turn into dragons. And so the premise is amazing. It sounds so interesting. You've got 50s housewives and dragons. Where where could you go wrong? The answer is so many places. But I didn't know that before I started reading this. I think I heard the premise and instantly bought the book because I was just so intrigued by this idea, which was a mistake. And I think part of my frustration is that it's such a good idea, but I think it didn't live up to how good the idea was. I think also maybe it didn't need to be a novel, or at least the way in which it was written, it shouldn't have been a novel, it should have been a short story or a novella. I think it could have been condensed into just looking at the sort of premise because I think it did lack as it went on it sort of started to lose its way slightly. The premise was great and it would have been greater if it was just shorter and it only looked at the great dragoning in the 1950s rather than trying to make a whole story out of it and I think the actual story part is what let the novel down. <laughs> So I also really enjoyed the discussion of internalised misogyny. So because dragons are associated with women and women's bodies, because women are turning into dragons, dragons are treated the same way as how people talk about periods and the menopause, with this sort of idea of shame and that you can't really talk about it publicly and it's private and it's women's things that we shouldn't be talking about. So I really, really loved how it was sort of saying that, well, if dragons were associated with women's bodies, we wouldn't talk about them and dragons would be this shameful thing. And it's really interesting having that comparison because that's so true with talking about periods and the menopause and anything to do with women's bodies. So I thought that was a really interesting comparison. And again, I think it would have worked so much better if it was in a shorter form. And so you could have these really interesting discussions without like the rest of the story that kind of bogged it down. But yeah, the actual discussions of how we talk about women and women's bodies was really good. And I thought done really, really well. So a lot of this book is about female rage 
and I love that in a book. I, I am here for it. We love women being angry and I really loved the representation of just angry women. I will love it in any form. I am always here for some angry women and it was great. Love that for them. I really enjoyed seeing women being angry. Uh, particularly about responsibilities and women being angry at being put into positions of childcare and sort of household responsibilities. Really great, really not refreshing because it's sort of been done before, but I will love it whenever it comes up. So I was very happy to see it again in this book. Okay, <laughs> so those are all the things that I loved about the book. I will say the beginning of the book started out so strong because we were in this 1950s setting, we, were, we weren't talking about dragons, we had the really engaging writing style, we were talking about female rage and women being put into these boxes where they were stuck in the house with like childcare and having to look after a home and being angry about it and then turning into dragons, a sort of a representation of the female rage. The first half of the book, fantastic, great, no notes, really really good and I think the fact that the beginning of the book was so good really it just kept building my expectations and the fact that the rest of the book sort of the second half just really let it down I'm gonna go into more depth about why I think that but again I really think that this should have been shorter because that first half was so good and I think if it was just about that first half which was sort of set in the 1950s I think that would have been such a stronger final writing piece than trying to stretch it out into a novel. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you more about the things that I didn't like so much. I'm going to start off with talking specifically about the dragons. So dragons are typically large, scaled, winged beings. If I say dragon, I assume you will picture something. You might picture something aggressive something that breathes fire, something that's quite destructive. Looking at dragons, particularly in the Western mythology, rather than talking about like other areas of the world, for the purpose of this video and talking about this book in particular, I'm sort of focusing on the Western dragon, which is big, scaly, fire breathing, a symbol of destruction and rage, that sort of thing. I think the main issue that I had with this book is that that wasn't what these dragons were. I was expecting women <laughs> to be filled with this female rage from being put in these positions of childcare and household responsibilities and not being able to live their own dreams and have their own careers and lives and being stuck and pinholed into this very specific stereotype of what a woman should be, particularly a wife and a mother. I was expecting women to turn into big, scary, fire-breathing monsters. No. <laughs> we got dragons that were just not doing dragon things. We did have examples of dra women turning into dragons and then eating their husbands, and that's about as aggressive these dragons became. And I found that odd considering how dragons are usually associated with aggression and anger and fire and destruction, like all these things. And that didn't happen. The women became dragons, but the dragons that the women became were very stereotypes, were still female coded. And I had issue with that. I'm going to give so many spoilers for the book. So if you haven't read the book and you want to read the book without spoilers, like, don't, don't watch this video, go away and then come back when you've finished and tell me your thoughts and carry on. So The Great Dragoning, where lots of women across America, I think specifically, I'm going to go on to this, but I think it mainly only talks about America. We don't really hear about other women in other countries turning to dragons. So all these women across America all turn into dragons about 25% of the way through. They then leave, which I think I, I, I'm going to talk about that, and then uh, probably halfway or 60% through the book, the dragons come back. Again, I'm going to talk about this. But when they come back, we get to sort of find out more about the dragons. And that's, I think, fully where the book lost me. Because they could talk, for one thing, which, yes, 
I, I, I can understand why an author would want her dragons to talk. Because we have characters, sort of characters we know have turned to dragons, so it's useful for characters to be able to talk to each other even when some of them are dragons. I understand that. However, in my opinion, which again is just very much me and my opinion and if you disagree that's fine, but also do let me know if you if you disagree with me. I believe that dragons should not be able to talk, or at least should not be able to just open their mouths and the English language come out is just my my opinion because they're animals for one thing and animals can communicate but I don't but the animals can't speak English and dragons I believe are not human <laughs> so a dragon if a dragon is not human it should not be able to speak a human language such as English. So as soon as the dragons come back to America and start talking in English, you've lost me. And I just, I, I did find that difficult to sort of keep myself being immersed in the story. As soon as the dragons started talking, I kind of, it kind of lost me. But that was not all. Because then, so the dragons, not only, so not only could the dragons speak English, but the dragons started knitting. They started carrying around handbags, they started wearing lipstick, and hats, and aprons, and I'm just like, no! Because as soon as you have a dragon that's wearing lipstick and a hat, if you picture a dragon wearing lipstick, are you picturing sort of a classic massive CGI dragon with scales and breathing fire, or are you picturing the dragon from Shrek. That is my question. And the dragon from Shrek is a cartoon and is, yes, a great representation. Just love the dragon in Shrek. No, in no way am I trying to insult the dragon from Shrek. But I, when I'm reading this book, I just didn't want to be picturing cartoon dragons when we're trying to dissect sort of female stereotypes and roles within the family and roles in society. I want like real proper dragons. <laughs> I want like aggressive destruction, fire breathing dragons that don't wear lipstick and wear and wear hats and carry around handbags. I'm just like, no, what was the point of having women turn into dragons if they weren't gonna do anything particularly dragony? If they weren't going to be burning down cities and creating destruction and causing havoc. They just leave and then come back with handbags. I just, it, I cannot express how frustrating this was as a reader to suddenly have dragons wearing hats and knitting. It's like this author to then go and write a book where women turn into dragons, which are very, I feel like, Excluding the dragon from Shrek, dragons typically, I feel, are quite masculine coded and they are because they're powerful and aggressive, which is more masculine traits. So you go ahead and give these women these masculine traits and you turn them into quite horrifying, monstrous beings and then go ahead and make them and like feminize them all over again and it's like what are you trying to do what i don't understand what the author is trying to do with this book because it seems to be a message about feminism and equality and breaking down these gender stereotypes and gender roles only to go ahead and reconfirm gender roles and gender stereotypes i just cannot understand how this happened. <laughs> like how the author could take this great idea and this great opportunity and then not do anything with it and not try and push the feminist ideas beyond women allowing themselves to be angry. And I'm like, in the year of 2023, we should be pushing more controversial ideas. I, I don't understand how such an opportunity could have been wasted. <laughs> And I am gonna, I'm gonna carry on talking about the anger I have at this book at not taking opportunities to fully break down gender stereotypes. So the main premise of the book, we're still talking about dragons, 
Another main, so the main premise of the book is that women turn into dragons to escape being wives and mothers and specifically like housewives. So they leave and then they come back, which again, even with, even if the dragons just came back without lipstick and handbags and wearing hats and knitting, I would still be very frustrated by it because they come back into American society and then sort of pick up where they left off and they return into their positions of being wives and mothers. So it does say that a lot of dragons, some dragons try to res resume being wives and mothers within like households and then it doesn't quite work because dragons can't live in houses and all that. But they still, these, these dragons come back and then create nurseries and create sort of communal living spaces, which I mean, great, fantastic, love the idea of communal living spaces, love the idea of nurseries and sort of community childcare, but it's still women taking these roles. Why, if women have become dragons and we're trying to take down these gender roles and stereotypes, why do these women then resume the gender roles and stereotypes they were trying to escape in the first place. And there's no, there's not a good enough explanation for this. It just sort of happens. And then the second half of the book is sort of how dragons sort of re-engage with society, but specifically by taking these sort of traditionally feminine roles in terms of childcare or education or like healthcare. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> No, I just don't understand if you're writing a book about tackling gender roles and gender stereotypes, don't go ahead and then put them back in again and then reinforce them. I just don't understand why you would do that and why these dragons that are dragons would go ahead and return to looking after children. I just don't understand. And sort of leading on from that, the dragons go away, they leave America, and we sort of find out where they go, and some of the dragons go into space, and the dragons explore space, which I'm like, that is amazing. Please write me a story about women turning into dragons and then going to explore space. I would love to read that story. That story sounds amazing, but we don't get that story. And again, the dragons come back from space. And as a woman, if I turned into a dragon and went to, to space, I would not want to come back to then resume childcare responsibilities. I would stay in space. And there's a lot about women, like the dragons, like creating communities together. And I'm like, if you have done that, if there is a community of dragons in space, you cannot tell me they would want to come back at all. Like, I do not believe that is a realistic representation of what female dragons would want to do. I was frustrated. So those are most of my thoughts about dragons. I think I probably will think of more. I think I will circle back to dragons eventually, but those are most of my thoughts about the dragons. Moving on, I'm going to tell you more about my frustrations with the main character. So the main character is called Alex, which I just had to double check because I completely forgot what her name was. And I quite, I mean, she was fine as a main character, but I still have a lot of issues <laughs> with just her as a character. And specifically her as the character in which we experienced this book and this story. Uh, so first of all, this book does mention people of diverse backgrounds turning into dragons. So when we have all the descriptions and all the examples of women turning into dragons, it does mention lots of women from lots of different backgrounds, from lots of different and economic statuses, lots of women all over America, all turning into dragons. But the main character we get is this cis white middle class girl who's very like stereotypical child <laughs> like 1950s child of a housewife and i think her dad's a banker or something so it is she's a queer character and we get to see some of her romances which is really lovely and i actually really loved that part of the book because i did enjoy having her as a character and i think because she is sort of this very when you think of 1950s white child <laughs> daughter of a housewife 
you're very much she's very much what you picture and I think I understand why she was chosen as a main character I just think the book lacked having another main character from a different background I think it would have worked a lot better if we had multiple POVs each of whom had a different sort of relationship with the women in their lives who turned to dragons and I think that would have worked a lot better because I think who we had as the main character did get very tiring and when you've got such a huge concept like this that does affect lots of different people and the author is going to the trouble of mentioning lots of other people who are being affected sort of briefly in like a paragraph I think you very much get these tastes of all these different people and characters that you could have had as a main character and who possibly would have been really interesting to look into more deeply but we don't we only get like a paragraph of their experience and then we're back to the main character and I think having those little tastes of sort of other more diverse backgrounds as a reader you really want to dive deeper into that and you want to see more of sort of across like a more deeper look at different areas in society rather than just sticking with the one and I'm going to compare this book to another book so I think in a way The Power by Naomi Alderman had a more engaging book because you had different characters from lots of different backgrounds and you didn't just have female characters you had a male character as well and I think having that helped make the book more engaging because you weren't just stuck with the same character and it helped sort of really make the like give the point across about what the author was trying to say rather than just having the one character and a very limited world view when really this a book where it's talking about all women not all women but like the majority of women across America I think we really needed a better idea of other characters we needed just multiple POVs for this book. So something about like the main character physically is that she's described as being very small and I'm like I think we've had enough just generally in literature of having small female characters. I don't think I'll ever stop being annoyed <laughs> if there's a female character who is just small and petite and classically attractive. I'm like we've had enough Oh, I've had enough like I don't need more and I don't understand I don't feel the need to have a classically attractive small petite blonde main character in a book looking at lots of different women across America I'm like why did we not take the opportunity to have a character with like a less stereotypical physical description I think there was like an opportunity there that the author just did not take I don't think it's the main character <laughs> has an evil stepmother which again you know thank you feminism <laughs> I'm like why when we're again when we're having a book that's talking about feminism and gender equality and breaking down gender stereotypes why is there an evil stepmother at least make this evil stepmother a realistic character round her out a bit give us her perspective rather than just giving us an evil stepmother for, for what like why what was the reason for her what was the point other than to reiterate the idea that the main character is like really suffering which is like the main plot of the book is just how bad things can get for this main character the main so after like halfway through the book or like 40 percent through the book the main character basically is put into a situation where she has to take on childcare responsibilities and has to basically raise another child and when she's only like 14 or so she's really young she's like a young teenager and has to raise I think like a six a five or six year old I will talk about this in more depth but a lot of the book is talking about how she suffers and she never turns into a dragon and I don't understand why because the dragons seem to be a metaphor for female rage and the main character experiences rage and anger and repression of that anger and a lot of the book is looking about how she's repressing her emotions and repressing her sort of the ability for her to turn into a dragon and so reading it you assume that it's leading towards her being able to sort of recognize the emotions and experience those emotions which will lead her into being able to turn into a dragon but she never does and so by preventing the main character from turning into a dragon she is never able to experience or to fully experience these feelings of anger and rage that she is experiencing throughout the novel and I don't understand why 
I think it's a lot of the, the choices that the author seems to make don't make sense to me as a reader and that the author doesn't seem to be quite sure or doesn't seem to understand what the message is that she's conveying in her own book. So things just don't make sense, such as having a book where female rage equates turning into a dragon, the main character experiencing female rage, and yet never turning into a dragon. I just don't understand what the message was, or what the symbolism was, or what the idea was, if, you ca if the main character that we're experiencing this with never experiences like fully experiences the anger and rage enough to turn into a dragon and when all these other women all around the main character are turning into dragons you sort of feel robbed of the experience of turning into a dragon when you as the reader never get to experience what that's like i do understand that the author didn't like clearly did not want that to be the journey for the main character but i feel like by not wanting that to be the journey for the main character and only giving us this one main character then us as the author are robbed of that opportunity we never get to see the character that we're with turning into a dragon when we're reading a book about women turning into dragons and i just i feel like there is a lost a missed opportunity there and again circling back to the fact <laughs> that the main character is basically forced to raise a child while being a child herself, there is not a good enough explanation why no responsible adult stepped in. Because we find out that other adults know that this is happening and they don't step in to help her. And I'm like, there's no reasonable explanation why she is forced to go through so much and none of the adults around her step in to help. And we're sort of given a vague explanation, but it's just not good enough. And I think I cannot imagine having to go through what this main character is put through with needing to take on these childcare responsibilities from such a young age and then finding out that adults who could have helped knew and then didn't do anything to help you. I just don't. And then she forgives them that very much. I could not understand why i think again it's sort of like the author sort of pushing this plot and pushing an agenda where the main character must just be suffering but then you never get the catharsis because the main character is put through so much and she gets so angry about it but you never have the relief of her being able to express that emotion and therefore turning into a dragon because she never does turn into a dragon so you're just there experiencing this character going through so much sort of horrible experiences and like nothing comes from it. She just experiences it and then carries on. And then everything works out. Everything like it's a happy ending at the end. But it's it does it feels very hollow and empty because she never gets that emotional resolution. Because she never gets to fully experience this rage that she's been and she's angry for a lot of the book. But because anger equals dragon. And she was very, she has a lot of internalized misogyny, so she very much does not want to turn into a dragon at all. So she represses it. And that's never addressed. And that was so frustrating. <laughs> so moving on, um, my next section is just general plot things that I didn't enjoy. I have sort of touched on a couple of these as I've sort of talked. Uh, but so here, here are just plot things that I just didn't like. <laughs> so. I've mentioned a couple of times, so the dragoning very much happens in America. And like we do get reference to the rest of the world, but we don't really see other dragons from any other country than America. And I would like more explanation as to whether this is specifically something that only happened in America, and then why it never happened anywhere else. Or I would like to see other countries other than America having dragons. Just, you know please. So talking again about gender, I've talked a lot about women. I would now like to talk about men because this book just doesn't. So we get a couple of male characters. The majority of male characters in this book are just evil or bad or negatively portrayed. There's like, there are two male characters who are positively portrayed and one of them is sort of an old man and then and both these characters we don't really get much of them they're either sort of very coded neurodivergent or coded queer and i i would like to have more of male characters just generally just because i feel like when you have a book about gender roles you do need men 
featured and in a rounded way. And I just wish some of these male characters weren't stereotypical men. Again, when, we talk, when we've got a book that's trying to deconstruct gender roles and gender stereotypes and then continues to uphold gender roles and gender stereotypes, I just wonder what this book is doing when all the men are bad and all the women are good. That just isn't how gender works and how feminism works. That just isn't what it is. So I was just very frustrated by that. Final sort of area of frustration is with the ending of the book. So I have a lot of issues with this, but the book ends with women basically causing world peace, which of course is realistic. This frustrated me so much. So it very much has the message that if women were in charge, there would be no war, everything would be peaceful, there would be no problems, and the world would be at peace. Oh, and this makes me so angry. This gives me female rage, is the assumption that like, women are just beings of peace and joy and and conflict is only because of men. And this is what I don't understand, because if your book is about female rage and female women turning into dragons, surely, surely you cannot turn around and then have these female dragons caught, like creating peace on earth. If you're using dragons, like specifically dragons as your imagery and your symbolism, dragons are beings of war and of aggression and of conflict and destruction. When you're using your book to have women turn into that idea, you can't then turn around and say, oh no, but women are inherently peaceful and will always look for resolution. And like, even when they are dragons and like, they will always create peace. And when women have this power of destruction, they will use it to like, destroy all war and all other weapons so that everyone on earth can live in peace. I that's just such a simplified like message. It's not, I don't, again, I don't understand what the author is trying to do with this book because she's setting it up for such an interesting critique on society and yet she's wasting it all on st this very stereotypes that you would think she would be trying to deconstruct and yet all she's doing is upholding them and, the, and I don't understand how and why. This is, this is why, this is why, if you can't tell, this is why I was so frustrated with this book. Again, I'm gonna bring back to the power. And I, I do have issues with the power that are completely separate to my use of an example as, of it as like a case study. But what the power does is it does show how women and men are not completely biologically different beings with men being aggressive and sort of the cause of all war and women being peaceful and if they're in charge there will be peace on earth. The power says no, we're all people and just stereotypes is dictated by society and our belief system in our society. And if women were in charge there would still be war, which of course is true because women have been in charge and there has always been war. Also dragons being in charge would cause war. There's nothing about women that mean that they being in charge would mean peace at all. And if you did have dragons going into war zones and destroying weapons, people would just make better weapons and there would be war. Any sort of power imbalance and power inequality will cause conflict. So the very fact that women are turning into dragons, if you want to bring war and conflict into it, there would be a huge war involved in this if women as dragons would be going were going out into war zones and causing chaos. Which I believe, yes, they should, because that's what dragons do. And of course there would be a backlash against that. And that like this book should have had conflict. And I don't understand why it refused to engage 
in discussions of what actually would happen if women turn into dragons rather than just falling back on very stereotypical and non-realistic endings of oh there would be peace because women are in charge again it's upholding these stereotypes that you would think this book would be aiming to deconstruct i've said this so many times in this video but again i just don't understand why that wasn't the case so <laughs> i think those are the majority of my thoughts I had more thoughts, but those are the ones that I could express in a, a mildly understandable manner. So what we learn from this is if you are going to write a book where women turn into dragons, please don't give those dragons handbags and make those dragons wear lipstick. Please do not say that if women were in power there would be peace because it's simply not true and if you are writing a book where your aim is to push a feminist agenda push a feminist agenda and deconstruct the gender binary and deconstruct the stereotypes that uphold the patriarchy don't just go ahead and reinforce everything that your book is apparently trying to deconstruct. I think what makes me frustrated is that this could have been such a good book because the author can clearly write well, like the book is well written, but the premise is just so much better than what we actually got within this book. And it's just frustrating to see such a great idea completely wasted. And I, it just makes me very frustrated that we didn't get more nuance in the discussion of gender roles and the gender binary and gender stereotypes. And instead, we just got everything that the patriarchy is just sort of thrown back at us, but with dragons. It was just very a very frustrating read. Would I recommend this book? I can understand people enjoying this book because I did enjoy it for the first half. But I think if you do enjoy this book, then I, I don't think there's a way to enjoy this book without having to critique the message that it's sending. I think you can only enjoy this book if you completely ignore like the very real issues that it's sort of addressing, but in a very clumsy way. Those are all of my thoughts on When Women Were Dragons, and I think you can see how it was my most disappointing book of 2023. So thank you very much for watching if you've got all the way through. I'm very sorry for just shouting at you this entire video. If you have read When Women Were Dragons, let me know and let me know your thoughts and if you agree or disagree with what I've said in this video. Next week I'm going to be talking all about my favourite books of 2023, which will just generally be a much nicer, more positive, more relaxing video, which won't involve me getting very upset and frustrated. So do make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss more of my thoughts on books. Uh, make sure you like this video and if you would like to comment but you don't know what to say, leave a little dragon emoji and I will see you next week with another video.